Even before you were born, God had a plan for you. And he made you perfect for that plan. When he looks at you, he says, you're a masterpiece. Jesus actually came to this world to bring hope and healing to those who are broken and hurting. Jesus. 
All hail the Savior of our world. You know, the Bible says in John 16, 33, that here in this world, you will have trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And that is what we celebrate on Easter, is the resurrection of Jesus and how great God's love is for you and for me that he would send his one and only son to die on the cross for all of us. And so if you're joining us today for the first time, we hope that you're reminded of that great love, or maybe you're going to hear that good news for the first time. Either way, we are so glad that you are choosing to spend Easter here with us. My name is Heather, and I'm one of the venue hosts here in Oak Ridge, and we are just so excited that you're here, and we would love for you guys to help me welcome everyone joining us online with our chat host. Hey, what's up, Oak Ridge Online? Happy Easter. We are so glad that you are here with us today. Make sure that you use that chat feature, connect with our chat host, let them know how they can pray for you where you're watching from, they would love it. All right, guys, so we have an incredible Easter service planned for you today. We have a couple more worship songs. We have a special Easter message, and we even have some folks that are going public with their faith through baptism. So let's support and celebrate them together right now. Hey, good morning, church family. I'm here with Justin. Justin's wanting to get baptized this morning. He says he's trying to change his life, and this is his next step in that journey. So, hey, let's give Justin a hand. Well, Justin, do you want to tell everyone Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, based on that public profession in the Lord's command, I want to baptize you as my brother in Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism raised to walk in a new of life. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, church family, I'm here with Asher, and he's ready to get baptized this morning. He says, I want to know God and make Granny proud. Let's hear it for Asher. I love that. I love that so much. All right, bro, you want to tell everybody that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Awesome. Then in light of your profession of faith, it's my privilege to get to baptize you as my brother in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in a new life. Awesome. Congratulations. Wow. What an incredible way to start our Easter service with baptisms. And so maybe you're joining us today for the first time, and you're kind of like, I'm not really sure about what baptism really is. And so baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so maybe you've been coming here um, for a couple of weeks or maybe even longer than that, and this has been your next step. I just wanna encourage you that we can make that happen today. If you're ready to get baptized, you let us know. We have people in the back at the end of the service in blue shirts that you can go up to and you can let them know that today is the day. I want to do it. I'm ready to be baptized. Um, can you think of a better day on Easter than do, to, to do that? So we have some more people that are going to continue to be baptized. So let's continue to celebrate and support them right now. I'm here with Becky. Becky says this morning she's getting baptized. She says she started coming to Oak Ridge about eight months ago. Ever since she started seeking a relationship with God and the doors have opened and prayers have been answered. And she says baptism is her next step in her new life. So hey, let's give Becky a hand. <laughs> well, Becky, do you want to tell everyone Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay, well, based on that public profession in the Lord's command, I want to baptize you as my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. Congratulations. Hey, church family, I'm here with Zaim, and he says, I want to get baptized because I'm ready to give my life to God and start new. So that's amazing. Let's hear it. Awesome. Fantastic. Zayim, you want to tell everybody that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. 
awesome, then in light of your profession of faith, it's my privilege to get to baptize you as my brother in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in a new life. All right, church family, we got a lot of baptisms going on today. This is Beyonce. Beyonce says the reason that she wants to get baptized today is she wants to give her life to God. So, hey, let's give Beyonce a hand. All right. Beyonce, do you want to tell everyone that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right. Well, based on that public profession and the Lord's command, I want to baptize you as my sister in Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised you all in a newness of life. Congratulations. <laughs> Sunday morning as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to visit the tomb. And suddenly the earth began to shake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled the stone away. And he said to them, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he isn't here. He has risen victoriously just as he said he would. Come, see the tomb where he was lying and go and tell his disciples.
after service with praise and worship and baptisms, you guys can go ahead and take a seat. All right, so we are so excited to have you all here for our Easter service. And today we have Pastor Brian Moss, our lead pastor here uh, with us today for his message that you don't want to miss. So to get the most out of today's message, you're going to want to follow along with your message notes. You can use the ones that you received when you came through the door if you're joining us here in person. But if you would like a digital copy, and for those joining us online, we have two easy ways for you to get them. The first way is that you can text uh, Oak Ridge to the number 94000, and you can get all of our links sent directly to your phone. You can also download our church app, and then you can find your message notes under our live tab there. So along with your message notes, you'll see a connect card. And so this is how we stay connected with each other each week. This is where you could let us know your prayer request. Because we're a church that believes that God answers prayers. So we would love to be praying specifically for you throughout this next week. It's also a place that you'll find your next steps because we're a church that believes that everyone has a next step and you can find yours on your Connect card and check them off and let us support you through them. And then lastly, it is a great place for you to give us your feedback because we design these services both in person and online with you in mind. So we would love to know what you thought about the service, the music, the message, all of those aspects, especially if you are a first or a second time guest. If you are joining us for the first time, though, we would love to know how you found out about Oak Ridge. So if you'll let us know on your Connect card, we value you all so much, and we are so grateful that you're here joining us today. So if you would let us know um, how you found out about Oak Ridge on your Connect card and... If you are joining us today for the first time um, in person or online, make sure that you turn in that Connect card uh, because we are going to do a drawing for one of our first time guests and we're going to give a $100 gift card away. So please make sure that you turn your uh, Connect card in if you are joining us for the first time. So Pastor Brian is about to come out with his message, but before he does, we have a great recap video for you um, from Peace One Day. And so I'm so excited to see this video. You know, Peace One Day was actually last weekend on Palm Sunday. We closed our entire church doors and we sent every attendee and member out into the community and served. So it was such an incredible, powerful give back that we do every year on Palm Sunday. So let's check out this video. Video, uh, just to get some highlights from this incredible day.
Thank you, Oak Ridge, for being a church that genuinely cares and loves on our communities. Hey, happy Easter, everybody. Uh, Today we uh, celebrate what is known as uh, the climax of Holy Week. All over the world, uh, believers are gathering today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope for you, I hope for you today is uh, kind of the climax of a wonderful week. Uh, But Holy Week was anything but wonderful for Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Now, it started off great because seven days prior on Palm Sunday, he entered into Jerusalem as the crowds were shouting out, Hosanna, and they were waving palm branches, greeting him. But that was a greeting to be short-lived. Monday of that week, Jesus went to church and he found the temple was filled up with merchants and those who were selling a bunch of overpriced acceptable sacrifices. You couldn't bring your own, you had to buy theirs. And you couldn't pay with your own money, you had to exchange it for special temple money loaded with junk fees. And so Jesus, when he comes into the church, he flips out, or should I say, he flipped over the tables of all of these merchants and that actually signaled the last straw for his enemies as they began to plot how they could kill Jesus. On Tuesday of that week, Jesus was on his way down to the city with his disciples and he came across a fig tree. The fig tree was actually barren and Jesus stopped and cursed it, (laughs) to which his disciples were like, what's wrong with master, right? Like he got up on the wrong side of the bed or holy smokes, he's, he's cursing a fig tree. But also we know and understand that a fig tree specifically represented Israel in the Old Testament. And Israel was supposed to be providing the fruit of the knowledge of life to the nations, according to Isaiah the prophet. And Jesus is saying, no, no more of this. In fact, now he looks down and sees that not only the fig tree, but Israel had become barren and a lifeless religion. Wednesday of that week, some would know as Spy Wednesday. It's actually the day in which Judas Iscariot uh, starts the plot to sell out Jesus. And And the scriptures tell us that Satan himself entered into Judas. And Judas then goes to the chief priest and he sells out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which in today's commodity would be about $100. And once that deal is done... That sets into motion the days that would lead up to ultimately his death. It begins with Thursday, and Thursday was to be a day of sadness. Uh, We often call it Monday Thursday, but that was the day when following a last supper, a last meal with his closest friends, Jesus then retreats to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he would prepare his heart and his life for what was about to come. And he does that through prayer. So he asks his followers if they would join him in prayer. But each time he come back just to find they all were sleeping. So literally the disciples are sleeping while Jesus is weeping before his father. And his prayer time though was cut short by a lynch mob when they arrived. And the Bible tells us they were led by that traitor Judas who had given them a prearranged signal. You'll know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. And so Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and he gave him the kiss. Jesus said to him, my friend, go ahead and do what you've come for. And then the others grabbed Jesus and they arrested him. And at that point, all of the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus' closest relationships would become his deepest disappointment, betrayed, backstabbed, discouraged, and ultimately deserted. You see, the very people who should have been holding him up are now letting him down. And I don't know about you, but that happens in relationships, sometimes the very closest of relationships. Maybe that's where you are in your life, that that the people that you trusted, the people that you loved, maybe they turned their back on you and let you down. And, And I would tell you that Jesus knows exactly how that feels. Thursday sadness would then quickly turn into a Friday filled with suffering. Friday was a day of suffering. You see, after he was arrested in the garden, he was taken to the house of Annas, the the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest at that time. 
And there, at a mock trial, attendants began beating him and spitting on him and cursing him. All the while, Simon Peter is watching from the courtyard at a distance. And while he's watching, he's confronted by a young servant girl who said, I think you were with that guy, Jesus of Nazareth. And he denies even knowing Jesus, in fact, three times. And at that very moment, Jesus locks eyes with Simon Peter. And Peter remembers that Jesus had just told him at that last supper that he would deny him. And he ran from that scene, weeping bitterly. Following that, they bound Jesus and they drug him to the Sanhedrin. That's the the Jewish kind of supreme court where he faced a second mock trial that was loaded with false witnesses who had actually been bribed to tell lies about Jesus. And there, they sentenced him to death. But the Jews, not having the legal authority to execute anyone, they had to turn him over to Pilate, the governor. Now, Pilate wanted to get rid of this issue altogether. So he discovers that Jesus is from Nazareth and he's in Herod's jurisdiction. And so he carts him off to Herod in order just to get rid of the problem. Herod's officers then mock him and treat him with contempt. But the entire time, Jesus remains completely silent. Just as Isaiah had prophesied as a lamb is silently led to its slaughter. And when Herod had finally become tired of Jesus, he sends him back to Pilate. So he lands back in Pilate's court and Pilate, he can't find a reason to actually execute Jesus. So he tries to get him off on a technicality. You see, the Jews had a tradition of releasing one Jewish prisoner because of the Passover feast. And so he, he goes to the crowd and he says, would you have me to release Jesus? And the crowd cries for the blood of Jesus. So hoping to appease them, Pilate had Jesus scourged or whipped with a Roman cat of nine tails. That's a whip with nine different leather strands embedded inside the strands are are pieces of glass and stone so that when they're whipped, it literally is taking the flesh off of them. He has them whipped 39 times, which by law was Roman law. You couldn't do more than that until Jesus is actually at the brink of death. And afterwards, the Bible tells us that some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters and then called out the whole regiment. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and they wove thorn branches into a crown and they placed it on his head. And then they placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter. And they knelt before him in mockery and they taunted him, Hail, King of the Jews! And then they spit on him and grabbed the stick and they struck him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe, put on his own clothes again, and then they led him away to be crucified. They threw the cross upon Jesus' back and they ordered him to carry it up the long winding path that leads outside the city to a hill named Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. But being so weakened and exhausted from an entire night of beatings, Jesus collapses under the cross and the, and the Roman soldiers order a man by the name of si- Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross the rest of the way. When they reached the hill... They took Jesus and threw him down on the cross, and there they drove nails through his hands and his feet. And with one sudden jerk, they dropped the cross down into the stand where Jesus would be forced to literally raise his own weight up on the nails just to draw a breath. And he hung on that cross for six excruciating hours. Until finally, with one last breath, the Bible tells us he said, It is is finished. And then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Now the truth is certainly there's not any of us in here that could possibly relate to the level of brutality that Jesus had to endure that day. But I'd be willing to bet that there are some of us who are familiar with a life of suffering. Maybe for you it's a suffering that's physical and it comes from maybe a disease or maybe there's a a, a situation that your doctors have been trying to work on and work out and it just seems that there's no end to it and you endure that kind of physical pain day in, day out. Maybe for some of you it's an emotional 
suffering, a pain for maybe a relationship, and you can relate to the idea of being deserted or, or, or turned your back on, but maybe it comes from a trauma or from some abuse. Maybe it comes from actually a gri- a grief that just seems to have a grip on your life. Maybe, maybe even this Easter is the very first Easter that you're going to spend without that person that you love so deeply. And you just can't shake the feeling of grief. Maybe for some of you it's psychological. If statistics are true, it seems as though there's a tsunami pandemic of Americans that are struggling with anxiety. And and for many of us, it's not just a temporary, you know, worrying about something. For many, it's debilitating levels of anxiety and depression that drives you to a point where sometimes you just pray, I wish I could just end it all. It's that bad. Friend, I want to tell you, there's no pain or problem that Jesus does not understand. It's why he came. You know, 700 years before the birth of Jesus, God used the prophet Isaiah to give us a signpost. And he said this, he was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and we looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. He, yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that actually weighed him down. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we might be whole. And he was whipped so that we could be healed. No matter how much you've suffered, here's what I know. Jesus knows what you're feeling and what you're going through. Thursday was a day of sadness. Friday was a day of suffering. But Saturday was a day of silence. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 15 that then after that, the officer confirmed that Jesus was in fact dead. So Pilate told Joseph that he could have the body and Joseph bought a long sheet of linen cloth. And then he took Jesus' body down for the cross and he wrapped it in the cloth and he laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. And then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance and then, well then, nothing. Because Saturday morning the sun rose but hope died. And it seemed as though God had failed. It looked like Satan had actually won the battle. For there was silence from heaven for that day. Can you imagine? In fact, some of you can. You ever felt that way? Your mind is filled with doubt. Your heart is filled with depression. Your your heart is, is filled with despair. And you sometimes wonder, is God even there? Does God even care? Heaven seems silent. Sometimes the the Saturday of silence is even worse than the Thursday or Friday. But friend, the reason we're here today is that when all hope seems lost, Sunday broke through. Because Sunday broke the silence with an angelic celebration. And that's what Sunday brought, was a day of celebration. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28... Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and then he sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him. I would too. And then they fell into a dead faint. And the angel spoke to the women and said, don't be afraid. I know who you are looking, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. But he's not here. He's risen from the dead just as he said would happen. In fact, come and see where his body was lying. Now, go and quickly tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. Easter brought us The greatest gift ever. You know, we often associate the life of Jesus. We think that Christmas is the season of gifts, not Easter. 
But friend, can I just tell you, it was the resurrection, not his birth, that brought us the greatest gifts of all. Perhaps that's one of the reasons we have a tradition of giving gifts on Easter. Now, I don't mean like gifts that are wrapped with paper and bows and all that, but gifts that kind of look more like this. You like my Easter basket? How many of you, you had an Easter basket for someone in your family this year? Let me see your hand, see if you're more honest than 8 o'clock, all right? I see you back there, all right? Some of them were like, I don't know if I can say that, Pastor Brian. We love this thing. In fact, Americans love Easter basket. I can tell you because this year we will have spent $22 billion on Easter stuff. That we love this thing. Now, we love to put things in our Easter basket. We probably put some of this grass. Anybody know what I'm talking about? This stuff that you're finding for five more weeks all over the house. Right? It's everywhere. You can't, you know, you vacuum it up. You thought you got the last one. There's another one. You, you put things like, you know, the plastic egg. Sometimes you put little goodies in there. Uh, my favorite, the quintessential Reese's Bunny. Yeah. I love this thing, all right? This is the greatest thing ever. Some of us even add peeps. How many of you like to actually eat those things? All right. So you're welcome to these right after the service, all right? (laughs) We love to fill this thing up with all kinds of gifts. They're wonderful. Listen, they're wonderful gifts. But may I suggest humbly that it's not the Easter basket that gave us the greatest gifts, May I let you know that it was actually the Easter casket that gave us the greatest gifts of all, the gifts that came out of Easter, not from Christmas. Now, you might be saying, well, seriously, how in the world do you get gifts out of an empty tomb? Well, can I just suggest there are three gifts that the empty tomb gives to us through our faith. Here's the first one. Now, this might surprise you. It gives us, ready for it, wait for it. It gives us a new clarity about life. It gives us a new perspective we never had before Jesus rose from that grave. It gives us our faith. In fact, 1 Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 1. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given our brand new life. And we have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And notice this, and that future starts right now. So so many people think that salvation is a prayer that I prayed and a ticket that I get, and and then I just kind of suck it up and hang into this miserable life until finally I get to heaven and then I can cash it in. But the Bible says eternal life starts now. It is the life that we can enjoy in Jesus Christ right here, right now. You ever read about a famous person or a celebrity or someone who's incredibly wealthy who took their own life? And it's such a paradox. You see it on the media, you go, I can't believe that this person ended their life. Somebody will inevitably say something like this. They'll say, well, they had so much to live for. But friend, we've mistaken somebody who had a lot to live on for something that they had a lot to live for. Friend, it doesn't matter how much you have to live on if you have nothing to live for. And Jesus' resurrection brings and gives to us as believers, it gives us that something to live for. In fact, Paul said this way in Colossians 4, he said, Christ gives a meaning to your life. It brings a brand new meaning. It gives you a clarity that you're able to see that you never saw before. You ever done this? You ever needed to get something? It was late at night and it was a dark room and you thought, it's familiar, I can make it through the room. <laughs> you, you, you know, in your mind, you're like, I gotta plot it out. I know how to get from point A to point B. So you start walking and you're like, you stub your toe and go, bam, ah, sh- 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 shazam. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fact is, friends, uh, in life, shazam happens. Would you agree? In fact, some, some people spend their whole life smashing into things and they end up with bruised hearts and battered lives. Now, the truth is, the reason is that most people go through life in the dark 
confused about what life's... In fact, they're asking questions like, why don't my plans never seem to work? Why are the relationships in my life so difficult? Why do bad things seem to always happen? Or maybe, what is even the point of all of it? See, they're looking for clarity. And the Bible says, in order for you to have clarity, you have to clear up the inside before you can clear up the outside. Jesus, in the greatest sermon ever shared, Jesus said in Matthew 5, he said, you're blessed when you get your inside world, that's your heart and your mind, put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. See, it starts with a brand new life that starts inside. We need a clarity that only comes from Christ that can clear up the confusion that you have to experience in this life. And Jesus' resurrection brings that new clarity. Now, there's a second thing, a second gift that we get out of the resurrection, and it's this. I get a new confidence. I get a new confidence about my life and about the future. Now, with this one, I don't know about you, (laughs) but sometimes... I need a little boost to get me through what life's doing to me. You ever do that? You just need a kind of a little boost. Well, here's the thing. This boost will wear off and usually give you a headache in the meantime. But the Bible says this, and I want you to look at this with me. The Bible says, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. We don't deserve it, but God gives it where we now stand And notice this, we can now confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Now, I want you to notice that confidence in this life and in the life to come, it comes from these two words that he uses. Notice the word faith and notice the word glory. He's saying, listen, faith is trusting God for my salvation. Glory is trusting God for my ultimate destination. Because here's what you need to understand. When you know whose you are and where you're headed, it gives you the strength to face whatever comes your way. That's why Paul said in Philippians 4, Christ is the one who gives me the strength to face anything. Corey ten Boom is one of my heroes. Corey was placed in a Nazi death camp during World War II along with her entire family. Corey was ultimately released based on a clerical error, but she would end up being the sole survivor of her family. All the rest were murdered. Corey Ten Boom said this. She said, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you're going to be depressed. But if you look to God, you will finally find rest. See, friend, if Jesus can face the suffering of the cross... The weight of the world, sin, the fury of hell, then by God's grace, you and I, we can face whatever life brings. That's what we get from the cross. See, if God will lead you to it, God can lead you through it. And Easter tells us no matter how bad your week has been, Sunday is coming. Amen? Jesus' resurrection gives us a new clarity, gives us a new confidence. And then one more thing, one more thing. Wait for it. A new connection. (laughs) Be honest. You can't get this cheese at home, right? (laughs) Gives you a brand new connection. Do you know why God brought you here today? Do you know why God had you watching this today? Well, one of the reasons is because God wants you to know how desperately God loves you, how much God cares for you, and the great lengths that God will go to connect you in a love relationship with himself. You see, you were made by God, and you were made for God. And until you understand that, nothing else in your life is ever going to make sense. The reason that Christ went through the hell of the grave was to open up a connection that would save. I love this in Hebrews chapter 6. It says it this way. This certain hope of being saved is a strong and trustworthy anchor 
for our souls. Do you need an anchor for your soul? When you anchor your soul on the rock of Jesus, then no matter what storm hits you, you will hold. So he says, this is, a, this is a certain hope of being saved. It's a strong and trustworthy anchor, and it connects us with God. See, he died for us so that we could come alive through him. Friend, the miracle of Easter is not that one man rose from the dead. The miracle of Easter is that everyone can raise from the dead. Everyone comes alive through their faith. In fact, Paul says it in 1 Corinthians 15. Everybody comes alive in Christ. You know, when I ask people about Jesus Christ, they'll often say things like this. Well, pastor, I'm a Catholic. Or I'm Baptist. Or I'm Methodist. Or, I mean, you just go down, or maybe, you know, I was confirmed, or I got baptized, or I got sprinkled, or whatever it was. I didn't ask you if you were religious. See, Jesus says, I don't care what your background is. I don't care if your background was Catholic, or, or Krishna, or Muslim, or Mormon, or Jewish, or Jehovah Witness, or Baptist, or Buddhist. Or dare I say, Democrat or Republican. Careful, preacher. <laughs> Upper class, middle class, citizen, immigrant. I love this in Colossians. Paul says it this way. He says, guys, in this new life, one's nationality or race or education or social position, unimportant. Such things mean nothing. Whether a person has Christ is what matters. And he is equally available to all. See, it doesn't matter where you came from. It only matters where you're headed to. So if you're still living in a Thursday of sadness or Friday of suffering or even a Saturday of silence, may I invite you to a Sunday of salvation. How does that happen? It happens when we get a fresh start from Jesus Christ. The Bible says this, a clean slate and a fresh start comes from God by way of of Jesus Christ. Whoever gets the Son gets it all. So let me ask you this question this Easter. Are you ready for a fresh start? Are you ready for a do over for God to begin a brand new work in your life? Are you ready to come into and receive the gift that you only can receive through Jesus? Well, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. In fact, it's written in your message notes. And so we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. But if you want to, you can keep your eyes open. Did you know you can pray with your eyes open? I do that when I'm driving. <laughs> Dear God, get them out of the way. No, I'm just kidding. Would you look at this prayer with me together? Now, if you're ready for a fresh start, then you can pray this prayer with me, but pray it in your heart to him. Let's pray. Dear God, I want a fresh start today. I need your clarity and your confidence that comes from a new connection to you. Thank you for loving me and for sending your son Jesus to die so I could be forgiven. Thank you that Jesus rose from the grave to give me life and hope. Jesus, as best as I know how, I want to get to know you and learn to love and to trust you. So today, I surrender my life to you. And I commit to follow you from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, would you do me a favor? Would you grab this Connect card for just a second? We're not done. We're going to close out. We're going to have another worship song in just a second. But would you grab this card and then wave it in the air like you just don't care? No, seriously, I'm very insecure. It freaks me out. Okay, yeah. Woo! Thank you. 
Now, you probably already filled this out, but if you just prayed with me and asked Christ to save you, on the very back there's a purple line that says, I've asked Jesus to be my Savior for the first time today. Would you check that box and let me know because I want to pray for you this week and send you some materials that's going to help you to be able to grow in your faith. So we have some materials we'd love to send you, but i got to know that you've made that decision and we want to celebrate that together with you. One of the things that God asks us to do is kind of our first step is just what you saw in the services earlier when people were following Christ in believer's baptism. The Bible says that your first step is to tell other people that you've received Jesus as your Savior. And the way you do that is through believer's baptism. Romans chapter 6 says it this way. The Bible says, Don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? See, when we were baptized, we died and we were buried with Christ. That means that symbolically we're going under the water and it symbolizes we've been united with Christ in his death. Yeah, we were baptized so that we would live this new life. As Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father, if we shared in Jesus' death by being baptized, we will be raised to life with him. So the Bible says that when we declare our faith and tell other people, that Jesus Christ has saved us. It seals what God has done. So I want to invite you. Maybe you haven't done that. Maybe you have believed in Jesus. Maybe you did that today. Maybe you've done that before today. But you haven't taken that next step to be baptized. And we want to celebrate that with you on Easter. I can't think of a better time than to do that during Easter celebration. And so here's what we're going to do. Right after the end of this service, there's some folks in the back and wave your hand up there. They have some blue shirts on. Look at them because they, oh, they look so nice and they're smiling. And it says baptism team. If you're ready to take that step, they're ready to receive you and they will help you with everything you need a change of clothes and towels and we've got it all we would love to facilitate you taking that step today just like we did after the eight o'clock service having folks come and say yep i'm in i want to do that so all you got to do during this song you can go back and say i'm in i'm going to get baptized i'm ready to take this next step also if you've, been, if you've been saved and you've been baptized, you say, hey, I want to really enhance my faith during this season. I want to, one more thing. On the back, it says the Easter reading plan. Maybe you've already been saved, you've been baptized, but, but I want to invite you to join me in a simple five-day reading plan that will help us together to experience the peace that comes through Jesus because of Easter. So if you'll check that box, I'll send you a link. Let me know your email and I'll send you the link and and you together can follow along together in that reading plan, okay? Get it? Good, let's stand together as we celebrate what Jesus did for all of us on Easter. sorrow and dead in my sins lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free Washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom. You faithfully canceled my death.
darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. worship team for leading us. You guys can go ahead and take a quick seat while we wrap up from today's service. I just wanted to give you a couple of quick reminders just from Pastor Brian's uh, next step list. So if you prayed that salvation prayer with him, what an incredible day for you. We want to celebrate you and support you. So please make sure that you let us know on your connect card that you prayed that prayer. Also, if you are ready to get baptized, we are ready for you. You know, this Easter is actually the 10-year anniversary that my husband, myself, and our two middle children were baptized here on Easter. So we sat in that same seat. We felt called, but we got up and we did it. So we are ready for you if that's something that you are ready to do as well. And then don't forget to let us know on your Connect card if you're going to join us on our Easter reading plan. So that's the only way that we can get that out to you. Make sure that you drop off your Connect card here in person. If you're watching online, you can also do that digital Connect card by texting Oak Ridge to 94000. Um, you can do that here in person as well. So you can take care of it uh, super quick and super easy. And then the last thing is that if you are joining us for the first time, make sure that you turn in your Connect card because we are going to do a drawing for that $100 gift card. Just a small way of saying thank you for choosing to come and check out Oak Ridge for the first time. So please make sure that you turn in your Connect card. So next week we are kicking off a brand new relationship series. So it's going to be super awesome. We have a video uh, for you guys to check out to get us a better idea of what this will all be about.
So the ingredients to a good relationship, you're going to want to join us for that series that's going to start next Sunday. So make sure that you grab some invite cards. You can grab them as you head out the doors and invite someone to join you here next week for our new series. All right, so we are going to move into our time of giving, and this is where we give to the mission of Oak Ridge to bring hope and healing to hearts and homes. But if you are a first-time guest, please feel no pressure to give. We would actually like to send something to you. So again, if you let us know on your Connect card that you're joining us here in person or online for the first time, we're going to mail out one of these envelopes to you. It has a little bit more information about who we are as a church, but it also has a gift card uh, to Dunkin' Donuts, just a small way of us saying thank you again for choosing to spend today with us. Um, We are certainly grateful for that. Now, for the rest of you that do call Oak Ridge your home, we have three ways for you to give. You can give using our church app. You can also use the giving envelope at your seat back, and then you can go to our church website and you can give there. So as we prepare to give, I'd like to pray for all of us. Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you so much for your unconditional love, a love that is so great that you would send Jesus, your one and only son, to die on the cross for me and for everyone in here and everyone that can hear us. Lord, We are so grateful for that, that we didn't have to earn it because we can't. I know I can't. We can't earn that love. We just have to believe in you and believe in Jesus. Lord, I pray for every person here today that's taken a next step, whether that's accepting you uh, as your Savior, Jesus, or being baptized. May you continue to encourage them throughout their journey. And for those that give faithfully to you each and every week, we are so grateful for them. And Lord, that person that's given maybe today for the first time, may you be with them and bless them. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.